says, let me ask you, are you worried about what you will eat or you will drink? Uh, I know year 2021 is a rather bit crazy year and people are worried. What will happen with me? Will I be able to eat? Will I be able to work? Right now they're telling people that uh, unless you get something um, into your body, you cannot be able to eat, you cannot be able to travel and do this and that. So now many people are worried and they're asking, what will happen to me? What will happen to my family? Will he be able to uh, survive this year? Is Jesus, when is Jesus coming? And I'm seeing so many people are actually rushing and they, they really want to watch about rapture because people are looking for an escape plan, which is really good. Of course, we should focus on the things above, not things below. But uh, there's something about getting worried, which I have to let you know that uh, all is in control. There's nothing to worry about. Actually, the reason why you're worried is because probably you're looking on things with a different angle and we i hope this video is going to tell you why you should not even be worried even one minute of what you will eat of what you will drink um don't worry about all that now let me show you something you know most people have heard uh, the apostle paul he said "Whosoever shall not work shall not eat yes that is very true. But then, aren't you to look at this context of exactly what Paul was meaning when he was talking about whosoever will not work should not eat. Now, in 2 Thessalonians 3.7, Paul says, For yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught or for nothing but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. We worked so that we may not be charged unto you. See the next verse, what Paul says. Not because we have no, we, uh, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Now, there's something here you need to understand. Paul has said, not because we have not power. So what does Paul mean with this statement that we, not because we don't have power? He means we as Christians, we have a certain power. There's a certain thing which makes us different from the world. And which makes us not to worry about what we will eat or wear. Or how our things will be in the future. Now let's continue and see. Just mark, mark that point. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you. That if any would not work, neither should they eat. You see, the people of the world, they pick this word. And they say, if any or whosoever should not work, should not eat. I'm not after telling people not to work. But who is any? Who is whosoever? What does the word any mean? It means anyone. Both the saved and the unsaved. Any person living on this earth. But we have a difference. We have a power. We have some power which Paul has told us. Not because we did not have power. Meaning we had some power. We have some power. But Paul is doing this so that he may be an example he may be an example to the people of the world who do not have power and who are still confused. Now, let me tell you something. As you're worried, as you're looking, what will I eat? <clears throat> what will I do? What will I share? What, what's going to happen to my family? What will happen to my family? Remember one thing. Look at these pictures. <clears throat> Look at this child. Look at his father. Look at all this. Do you think this child will be troubled when the father is alive? Do you think this child is going to face trials and tribulations when the father is alive? It's not possible. Why? We are not whosoever. The reason why you don't understand your power as a child of God is because you don't read the Bible. Let's see what the Bible says concerning us being the children of God. What does the Bible say? Okay. John. 
John 1, 12. What does the Bible say concerning us being the children of God? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So now you're a child of God. You are not whosoever. You are not any other person there out there who doesn't know what he can be able to do, where he will get his food or drink. You are not those kind of people who are rushing up and down. They are trying to say, please, uh, a scientist, give me whatever you have to give me as long as I'll be able to travel and work and do whatever I can be able to do because I don't have my fate. I don't know what's going to happen to me. No, you are a child of God and God is your father. And let's see what God says um, about his children. Let's see what God says about his children. Matthew 7, from verse 7, and we'll go all the way to 11. Let's see what God says about his children. He says, ask and shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Oh, what a man is there of you, whom his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Is there anyone whom, when you ask your father, he will give you a stone? Have you ever talked to your father and tell him, Dad, I'm, I'm feeling hungry, and then he gives you a stone instead of bread? Is it? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? Now see what God says here. If you then, being evil, Know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? If you people, you're evil and you know what to give to your children. When your child asks you, Dad, even if that child was uh, uh, doing wrong things in the house just the, the, the minutes before, and they ask for food, he will always be given. How much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? How much more? How much more? But now, do you know why you don't receive? Do you understand why you don't receive your food and drink and whatever and what to wear and uh, uh, something to pay for your house bills and all those things? Do you know why you don't receive? Do you know why you're saved? But then it's really impossible. You pray and pray and pray until you have to go and to look at things from the world. And you have to go and ask the world and tell them, please, let me be like you guys so that I can live. You're, you're admiring the people of the world and saying, these people, they're eating, they have big cars, they have this and this. It's like God is not answering me, so let me just join in the world. Do you know why you're not receiving? Do you know why? Let me show you the reason why you don't receive what you pray for. James. 4. James 4, 3. This is the reason why you're not receiving. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it, consume it upon your lusts. You see, people, even Christians, there are people who are called carnal Christians. The reason why they are asking things, they are praying to God and telling you, God, please, I need this money to do something, blah, blah. And you know very well you're going to use that money or that provision for your lusts. That's the reason you don't receive. You ask and you receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. If you could ask for the right reasons and you do the right things, will your father not who is in heaven, not provide for you? Will your father who is in heaven not give it to you? You tell him, Jesus, I need this. I know I don't know where I'm going to eat. I don't know where my food is going to come from today. Here in Africa, most of the time, we pray for, you know, we pray for everything. God provide for us. We don't know what we'll eat today. God always provides for us. But some people, especially in Europe and America, most people, they say, I've heard people saying, I don't need to pray for bread. It's in my fridge. I already have everything that I ha I need. Anything else that I need, I just go want to go and do whatever. I, uh, and some people, not even forget about that. The others who pray, honestly, and they tell God, please give me food to eat. Give me uh, some money to pay my bills and all that. But when they get that, get, they, they go into evil things. 
they start uh, looking down upon the other people. And that's why the Bible says, you do, you ask because you want to consume it in your lusts. And that's why you don't receive. Brothers and sisters, we are children of God. And God is our Father. And He tells us, I will give you what you ask. Use faith and pray to God and tell Him. And hold God accountable with His words. And tell Him, God, you say that I'm your child. I will not suffer if you're my father. And you're going to provide for me because you told me. You told me this. And another thing, if you want to hold even God much more accountable with His words, let me show you something here. Matthew, Matthew 6, 33. If you really want to hold God accountable, even much more, do this. The Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Which things? Your provisions. Your provisions. God is going to provide for you everything else. He will provide for you. But you, you are busy running up and down and saying, I want to join you the world. I want to go and see. I'm so worried. I don't know what is going to happen of me. You are a child of God. Seek ye the kingdom of God first. Learn to please your father. The child who pleases his father, he doesn't need, even need to talk to his father and tell him, Dad, I need this. No, his father knows. It is end month. I need to send my child some money for upkeep in, in school. He knows. I need to do this for my child. Because you please your father. The reason you don't get is because you don't seek the kingdom of God first. And this is a good example telling us we should not be worried. Three quarters of our life should be all about pleasing our father. Seeking the kingdom of God. And then after we seek his kingdom, we do his work. We, we tell people about the gospel. We do his work. We try to be righteous. We try and do what is good because we are created. We are his workmanship, created unto good works. We tell him, Jesus, you created me unto good works. Now I'm going to do the work of your kingdom. And then provide for me. You promised me that when I seek the kingdom of God, you're going to provide for me. And the Bible continues and says, take therefore no thought for the morrow. Don't keep on thinking, what will I eat tomorrow? What's going to happen? For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Brothers, stop thinking about what will happen of me tomorrow. How will 2021 be like? I don't know what's going to happen. What about 2022? Do I have enough savings? Do I have this and that? What will going to happen? No, God tells you, don't take thought of tomorrow. Yes, of course, you need to work. Small, small things here and there. But the larger picture of trying to conform to the things of the world so that you can get something for yourself, forget about all that. Seek the kingdom of God. And pray because your God the Father, he tells us, let's pray for bread. Let's pray for what we need. Let's focus on him. And he's going to provide for us. We'll not need to be worried about nothing. Don't be worried about things. Don't be worried about all this. Don't be worried what is going to happen. Where will I run to? Which, which hall will I hide? People are creating bunkers right now because, you know, war is coming and things are coming. I don't have a bunker. I don't have this and that. Where God is your bunker. God is your banker. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And if you're out there and you're not saved, the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about how that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He died for you so that you can be saved. And if you put your trust in Jesus Christ, you put your trust in what he did for you at the cross, he replaced you. You received what you, you, you did not deserve. That is what we call grace. You are supposed to be at that cross. At that cross. You are supposed to be at this cross. But what happened? Jesus, he replaced himself. And he went there and he said, it's okay. It's okay, my son. I'll be there. I will be there at that cross. Let me take it for you. That is what we call grace. And if you believe this death of Jesus, the death of Jesus was for your sins, then you're saved, my friends. Hope it's been a blessing. God bless you.